the story is told about uh, Oppenheimer, Robert Oppenheimer, when he saw the first blast, nuclear blast at Alamogordo. And the press mm -hmm. said, what were you thinking when you saw the first atomic bomb? And he said, well, I was thinking of the dance of Shakti. The dance of Shakti. Yeah, and as I recall, he used a quote from the Bhagavad Gita to describe the atomic bomb, yeah. brighter than 10,000 suns. Brighter than 10,000 suns, yeah. So this is called, the, the Vedic writing and the Upanishads are called science by people who have studied them, mm -hmm. not only in ancient times, but today. Yeah. Science meaning to discriminate between this and this. Mm. Well, Dean, we're going to be uh, taking a break shortly. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. We've got a lot to explore about the Sanskrit tradition and its relevance to us in our lives. Thank you. Welcome back to Thinking Aloud. I'm your host, Jeffrey Mishlove. We're talking about the Sanskrit tradition with physicist and Sanskrit scholar Dean Brown. Earlier, Dean, I mentioned what you might even think of as an equation, Atman equals Brahman, which to me is one of the fundamental insights of the Sanskrit tradition. The idea is, I think, the essence within each of us, Atman, is the same as the essence of the whole universe, Brahman. Yes, the biggest thing that you can think of is Brahman. Ever expanding. It is all the universe and all the many universes, if we have parallel universes, all summed up into one unbounded, expanding everything. And also the supreme deity. And the supreme deity, Brahma. On the other scale, the smallest thing you can think about is your center. And your true self is smaller than any of the parts that go to make it up. It's not your body. It's not your ego. It's not your self-image. It's essential inside of all of those. And the equation of the Veda is... Atman equals Brahman. That which is everything is that which is your essence, personally. That seems to be at the heart of all mysticism, really. Yes, I think all other forms of mysticism, all the other tra traditions, all the other cultures, arrive at the same point. I think the Vedic is the most... Uh, extended and most sophisticated version of it, but I think that we're all saying the same thing. It, it's sort of like the E equals MC squared of metaphysics. Ah, it is that and much more, yes. And, and if I understand the Vedic tradition, the Sanskrit tradition, it is out of this insight that, that a whole a science of metaphysics unfolds. Yes. From this point, Atman equals Brahman, we get the whole cosmology of the ancient uh, Indians, the ancient Greeks, is derived from it because Greek is a Vedic uh, subculture and Latin, uh, our modern science, is derived from it. Mm -hmm. uh, all of that comes uh, in its many forms down to us in, mo in the modern form of Advaita, Vedanta. Vedanta means the fulfillment of the Vedas. Veda means wisdom. And Advaita means not two, 
that which is the biggest is not different from that which is the smallest. So when we think of Hindu culture, for example, as being polytheistic, uh, and we don't understand this Advaita tradition, we're missing something very important about the way they understand their relationship to their deities. Yes, indeed. The, uh, the uh, Vedic uh, tradition, the Vedic wisdom is so extensive that when a person comes to it, he brings himself to it first. So the first thing we find, one finds in the Veda is himself. And his polytheism, as it goes deeper and deeper in, into it, becomes uh, a monotheism and beyond a monotheism. Even monotheism is not essential enough, not subtle enough to get the idea mm -hmm. that you ultimately find in the Veda. Yeah. Now, in Plato, we have the notion of the world of ideals. We call it the Platonic world, the world of pure forms. But th this is also oh, found in, oh, yeah. in the Vedic tradition. See, that's in the Veda, that's in Sanskrit, that's called the Ritam Bara Pragyan. Uh, Ritam uh, is where we get our word right. This is right. Uh, this is a right angle. Make a right turn at the corner. Uh, let's make it right. Let us let us correct something. Uh, that all c goes back to the Sanskrit idea of that which is perfect. Mm -hmm. And everything in the universe, everything that's manifest, is imperfect. So the dynamic of the universe is to f for the imperfect to dynamically approach the perfect. Mm -hmm. And, and the metaphysics, the practical aspect, as I understand it, of the Vedic metaphysics is that through disciplines, through meditation, through centering oneself, we are able to apprehend that Ritambara world, that perfection, and then we can bring it into manifestation in our lives. Yes, by keeping your eye on the perfect, and letting your feet find the way in nature, we bring about the expression of perfection in the manifest. Mm -hmm. And so the word man, the, the Sanskrit root man, mankind, mind, mental, manifest, manual, are all part of our word human, mean manifest the ideal. Mm -hmm. So the word human combines that sense of aum, the sound of the universe, with the idea of, uh, of man. manual, Manifest. manual uh, taking action, using your hands, being here and now in the world. Yes. And even the word action comes from the Sanskrit idea of prakriti. To act comes from prakriti, and prakriti is their word for nature, practical. Mm. Practical is in contrast to theoretical. We have theory and praxis. Theory, theoretical, comes from the Sanskrit devas, deus in Greek, theos in Greek, deus in Latin, uh, divine, which originally means senses. Your senses are your devas. So, so God is your senses your perception of the universe. A very sensory experience is, is the way that we connect. Everything comes from your senses. Mm -hmm. Now, you have thousands of senses, but it's through all of your senses that you comprehend God, the universe. And the very idea that a human being can comprehend the divine, the, the infinite, is uh, particular in some way to the Sanskrit tradition, I think. Yes, indeed. And, by com and to comprehend the divine, which is to say everything, one comprehends oneself, one's Atman. Mm -hmm. The root to the divine is through the Atman. Mm -hmm. The root to everything that you sense or can sense is through your center. Now, now, the Sanskrit tradition, of course, is a vast literature. We have the Vedas, the Upanishads, the Mahabharata, the Bhagavad Gita, the Yoga Sutras, the Brahmanas. The Tantras. The Tantras. Well, the Tantras, in particular, are interesting because, as I understand it, they're really the oldest of these traditions. Yes, the Tantras 
are the shamanic practices of the proto-Vedic people, 